P4 static electricity. So what causes static electricity? Well, when two insulating materials, so those are materials that can't conduct, when they're rubbed together, electrons will be scraped off one and dumped on the other, and this will leave a positive static charge on one of them due to the lack of electrons, as it has lost electrons and so now leaves it positively charged. In this case, the electrons have moved from the duster to the rod, and so leaves the duster with a positive static charge. Which way the electrons are transferred depends on the two materials involved. Electrically charged objects attract small neutral objects placed near them. For example, a rubber balloon and little bits of paper. However, only the electrons move, never the positive charges. However, both these charges are caused by the movement of electrons, positive and negative electrostatic charges. The positives are caused by electrons moving away elsewhere. This can be shown in the diagram, where the electrons have moved, leaving the object on the right with an overall positive charge and the object on the left with an overall negative charge. However, they are both caused by the movement of electrons. Now, if enough static charge builds up, it can suddenly move which can cause sparks or shocks, also known as an electric shock. Earthing. A charged conductor can be discharged safely by connecting it to earth with a metal strap. Electrons flow down the strap to the ground if the charge is negative, and electrons flow up the strap from the ground if the charge is positive in the charge conductor. This means they will be safely discharged through the metal strap in earthing. Repulsion and attraction. Two things with opposite electric charges are attracted to each other. Two things with the same electric charges will repel each other. These forces get weaker the further apart the two things are. Atoms or molecules that become charged are known as ions. So the charged atoms and molecules are known as ions. Now on to more on static electricity. First off, about how static electricity can be a nuisance. For example, attracting dust. Dust particles that are charged and will attract to anything with an opposite charge. As these dust particles that are charged will attract anything with an opposite charge, this can be a problem, as many objects around the house are made out of insulators that get easily charged. For example, the TV screen, wood, and plastic containers. And these attract dust particles, making cleaning a nightmare. Another reason why static electricity can be a nuisance is how clothing clings and crackles. So 
When synthetic clothes are dragged over each other, like in a tumble dryer, or over your head, electrons get scooped off the synthetic clothes, leaving static charges on both parts. That leads to the inevitable attraction. They stick together and cling to you, as opposite electric charges are attracted to each other. And there can be little sparks or shocks as the charges rearrange each other. And so you get these sparks or shocks as the charges are rearranging themselves. Now, another nuisance about static electricity is shocks from door handles. If you walk on a nylon carpet and you're wearing shoes with insulating soles, charges build up on your body. So, if you then touch a metal door handle or water pipe when wearing these insulating shoe soles on a nylon carpet that get charged easily, the charge flows via the conductor, which is the metal door handle or water pipe, and you get a little shock. And this can be a nuisance. Static electricity can also be dangerous. For example, if a lot of charge can build up on clothes, as a large amount of charge, static charge can build up on clothes made out of synthetic materials, if they rub against other synthetic fabrics, and eventually this charge can become large enough to make a spark, and if it is near any inflammable gases or fuel flames, this will lead to an explosion and this is very dangerous. Another danger of static electricity is in grain chutes, paper rollers and fuel filling. You see, as fuel flows out of a filler pipe, or paper drags over rollers, or grain chutes out of pipes, then static charge can build up. as you can see in the diagrams. This can easily lead to a spark and might cause an explosion in the dusty or fumey places, for example when filling up a car with fuel at a petrol station. Another explanation of earthing, showing the charged object and a conductor, e.g. a copper wire. And it's earthing as it provides an easy route for static charges to travel into ground, meaning no charge can build up to give you a shock or make a spark. Static charges are a big problem in places where sparks could ignite inflammable gases, or where there are high concentrations of oxygen, for example in a hospital operating theatre. Fuel tankers must be earthed to prevent any sparks that might cause the fuel to explode. Refueling aircraft are bonded and they're bonded to their fuel tankers using an earthing cable and this is to prevent sparks when the airplane is filling up with fuel. Anti-static sprays and liquids work by making the surface of a charged object conductive. This provides an easy path for the charges to move away and not cause a problem. Anti-static cloths are conductive so they can carry charge away from objects they use to wipe. Another object that can be insulated to prevent sparks is mats and shoes. You see, insulating mats and shoes with insulating soles prevent static electricity from moving through them. So this stops you from getting a shock. Now onto the uses of static electricity.
One use is in paint sprayers and getting an even coat. You see, the electronic, electrostatic paint sprayer is charged, which charges up the small drops of paint. Each paint drop repels each other since they've got the same charge, for in this case, all negative. And so you get a very fine spray as they all repel each other. And the object to be painted is given an opposite charge to the gun. So it attracts the paint, in this case, a positively static charged car and negatively charged paint drops that attract to each other. And this method gives an even coat, hardly any paint is wasted, and parts of the bicycle or car pointing away from the spray gun still receive paint too, and there are no paint shadows. Another use is dust precipitators. As factories and power stations produce a lot of smoke, which is made of tiny particles, and these can be moved by a precipitator. So, in the precipitator, as smoke particles reach the chimney, they meet a wire grid or rods with a high voltage and negative charge. The dust particles gain electrons and become negatively charged from the wire grid or rods. The negatively charged dust particles repel electrons on the plates so that the plates become positively charged and they induce a charge in the plates. These earth metal plates are where the dust particles are attracted to, where they stick together to form larger particles. When they're heavy enough, the particles fall off the plates or are knocked by a hammer. The dust falls to the bottom of the chimney and can be removed. By doing this, it means the gases coming out of the chimney have very few smoke particles in them. Another use of static electricity is in defibrators and restarting the heart. You see, tiny little electrical pulses inside your body control the beating of your heart. So an electric shock to a stopped heart can make it start beating again, and you do this with defibrators. A defibrator consists of two paddles connected to a power supply. The paddles are placed firmly on the patient's chest to get a good electrical contact, and then the defibrator is charged up. Everyone moves away from the patient, except for defibrators the operator holds, who holds interrated handles, so only the patient gets a shock, and the charge passes through the paddles to the patient and make the heart contract. <laughs>